Hello everyone, today it's Thursday, October 7th, 2021. This is the week and charts. I'm sure I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. All right, what are we going to talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I guess this eight should be a seven. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks, and we're going to focus on more on doing trading stuff. It hasn't been saying quite a bit. I'm cognizant of what I've been doing as a trader for quite some time, but especially lately. And I've been sharing more and more, as you probably know, and kind of like a little bit of a looking over my shoulder. And I also want to touch upon a lot of things like the emotions and the trading psychology involved. And I'm touch upon that a little bit this week. And that's something I want to get back into quite a bit. So I want to talk a little bit about exactly what I do. And that'll make sense in a minute. And, and some of that is just buying stuff that goes up. Market timing, I think it's important that we do an update on that. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. And then again, buying stuff that goes up. This is Claim Screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often summing up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff could happen between now and then. That's barring a line from my buddy, Greg Morris. So I've been talking about this trading stuff quite a bit. And again, I've been really, really cognizant of it. And as I've said, ad nauseum, people say, what do you do? I tell them, and then they're like, well, you know, and it's okay, whatever. And then if they get to know me better, in one case, it took a guy seven years, but eventually they all ask this, what exactly do you do? I buy things that go up and I sell things that go down. Now, sometimes, obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but lately, once again, in Bitcoin, or I mean crypto, I should say, crypto, lately, once again, in crypto, he tried to say, or the shit coins especially, it's been just doing that. Now, every time I talk about those altcoins, they seem to stop rallying, but it is what it is. And we'll get into all that in just a minute. And we're going to jump into the live charts and see if we can find some new opportunities. And I'll show you everything that I am currently long. And I'll walk you through some of those trades in just a few minutes. Right as I'm going live, I had some random thoughts on exactly what I do. and I know that there's guys out there that make trading seem easy. And they sit on the rented, rented private jets and rented Lambos or whatever. And the good news is, not to, not to be shot on Friday, but if these people rip people off, which they did, they're going to go away for a long, long time. And this particular group of people, and I don't want to digress too far, but they're, they're being sued for $137 million. So allegedly they built people out of 137 million dollars at least that's what the government seems to think and whenever i struggle with trading and i struggled on and off a lot this week and a lot of times it's it's not nearly as hard as many of us try to make it and it's a lot simpler than that but i never said it was easy and, and when i struggle i think that you know you're probably struggling too because you're a human being and as William Eckhart once said, it's an uphill battle against human nature. It might have been an uphill swim against human nature. I didn't have time to grab the book right before I started. It's in one of those turtle books. I, I swore I never would read the turtle books. And, I, and now I'm trying to remember why I said that. I think it's because being in the industry, I, I know a guy who knows a guy. I had a client once. I got fleeced by one of the turtles. One of them, who happens to be my favorite, is in jail. <laughs> you know. And they had, I think they were also in the right place at the right time. But you can't take that away from them. And, you know, maybe it's sour grapes because I'm jealous and it all happened a little bit before my time. And I wasn't aware at the time. Anyway, but Eckerd said, trading is an uphill battle against human nature. And I'll get that full quote for you next week. And, you know, yesterday I had a really bad day and struggled a lot and today turned out to be pretty darn good and it made up for all of yesterday's struggles and, and the, the tough part about trading for me is a lot of times you feel like you're Einstein's definition of insanity you, you just keep thinking like geez if I keep doing the same thing over and over surely I'll get a different outcome well there's a fine line between that and being prudent and following your system and doing what you should do and as I say quite often, not that I won't drop an F-bomb, 
because I do, but it's a heck of a lot easier to trade my own trading service because I'm forced to lay out a plan. And that's one of the selfish things I do, or from a selfish standpoint, I should say, I have the trading service because it pays it, it pays me to pay attention, okay? And I have to pay attention and I have to take the trades and I won't put any trade on there that I won't ask, that I wouldn't take myself. I, I won't ask you to take a trade, not that I'm asking you, it's education purpose only, so that's a bad choice of words. But I won't mention any trade or recommend any trade that I wouldn't take myself. And when it comes to like, oh, oh boy, they're going against me and the market's rolling over, maybe I should just bail out. It's like, nope, you're going to follow your plan because that's what you said you would do. And you might even use a little bit of discretion in that plan on something like MTTR, ALIT, which did eventually stop out, DATS, which stopped out at higher levels, but it still gave up a lot of open profits in the end. But anyway, the trading part is often quite simple, and I never said easy, and that's why I trademarked trading simplified and not trading easy. I guess trading easy sounds like Tarzan speak. <laughs> trading easy, trading not easy. I think being flippant is key, and this is something I woke up and wrote about this morning. I was getting ready to hold up a notebook. I realized my camera's not working, at least with this software. <laughs> But being flippant is key. This is something I talk about quite a bit. Larry Williams, I found a quote from him a while back, a few years back. And basically, he said, in order to be a successful trader, paraphrasing, and I talked about this also in Trading Simplified yesterday, but you have to not care. You have to be clinically dispassionate. The more you care, the worse you do. It's counterintuitive. And it's a lot easier said than done. And, and his point was that it's really quite simple. And he didn't say easy either, but it does go against human nature. That's one thing that I do like about the turtle book, at least so far. This is the complete turtle trader, I believe. And it's okay. I mean, you can't, you know, they were in the right place at the right time. I don't know if I said that already. Breakouts were really doing well. If if they were so great, then they would have had success afterwards. But we don't know exactly what happened afterwards. It might, maybe it's not just the markets. And I also think that it helped to have Eckert and Dennis as mentors. And also, in addition to all that, you're given a job. And if you don't do what you're told on that job, you're going to lose your job. I met a trader a while back, and he hired somebody to trade a system that he simply couldn't trade because it didn't fit his own personal psyche, but he knew it worked. And I don't, he didn't go into any specifics, but I don't know if it had big drawdowns or wild and crazy swings. And in the long term, it worked, but for whatever reason, it didn't fit his psyche. It was difficult for him to trade. So he actually hired somebody to trade. He's a very matter of fact type of person. He said, You're going to trade this system. This is your job. And if you don't do exactly what this system tells you to do, I'm going to fire you. And he, did a good job for any system. So being flippant is key. And it's easier said than done. And it's, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty damn good cryptocurrency trade. Okay, I'll tell you that flat. I'm not selling any cryptocurrency products, believe me, you know, so <laughs> don't get nervous. But I'm a pretty damn good cr cryptocurrency trader, if I say so myself. And the reason is my accounts aren't that small, but now, or aren't that big. But now that they're getting bigger, I would be willing to say, as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to get a little harder and harder to trade. Because I, I do remember last week, a week before, going, oh, I'm, I'm just, that was $200. And then this morning, I'm like, oh, that was $2,000. It's like, well, wait a minute. Now I'm starting to think about the money. It's kind of like, don't think about elephants, you know? Easier said than done. But being flippant is key. Kind of reminds me of the tyrant thing I went on for a while about being a trading tyrant. I'll have to dig up some of those articles, maybe put it in this week's newsletter. And your job is where you have, let's say you have six employees and five employees are working their butt off and one employee is working, is, is sitting on his butt, okay? So who would you fire? Well, not the guy who's sitting on his butt because any day now, he's due to start working again. But instead, I'm going to fire the guy that's doing really, really well. 
because he's probably getting ready to stop working any day now. And that's the kind of mentality, one of the few analogies that you can connect to the real world where it's not such an uphill battle against human nature. Okay, well, if I look at it like building a, a team of good people, I'm just going to get rid of the ones that aren't working. And it reminds me of a line from Half Baked, a uh, critically acclaimed movie. I guess it was Oscar nominated, I'm not sure. But they, I'm not going to ruin it. Well, it's been long enough. I guess I could give away a little bit here. <laughs> but one of the guys was working at a fast food restaurant, and they had just kind of stumbled into the selling of pot, and they were making a lot of money selling pot, and he pretty much had enough of the fast food restaurant, which I guess doesn't take long. And then he grabbed the mic, and he said, F you, F you, F you. He went through all the management and all the other employees, went through all the patrons, and then he pointed to a little old lady and said, you're okay. <laughs> and then he proceeded to say, F you to everyone else. So you have to be a little bit like that in your trade. And speaking of which, I have been throwing some maids into the volcano. I did get a little nervous coming into the slide because I'm like, oh my goodness, I have a lot of positions on, a lot of positions on the long side. Now, should I have exited all my positions? No, I, I preach sticking with the positions. But I have to make darn sure that I'm honoring my stops. And I put in a bunch of alerts. And over the last few days, I've been getting some alerts on some of these stocks that are underperforming. They were on a chopping block anyway. And as I get alerts on them, I force myself to get out. In some cases, if I'm really busy, I've been putting in hard stops. By the way, Along the lines of exactly what I do, and I need to make more and more notes of this, and I will, I promise. But let's say I come in today and I've got a few stops that are a bit on the iffy side, meaning that they're fairly close to my protective stop and could stop out really soon. And if I don't have a hard stop in place, especially if I don't have a hard stop in place, I'll create a separate watch list called Chop and Block. And I'll just keep an eye on that equity. And if that, if that equity keeps eroding, I know that I'm going to have to make sure I honor that stop or at least have an alert in place. And if I hit an alert, like on one of them I hit today, I hit an alert, and I saw the equity was not looking so hot, I said, you know what? I'm just going to throw a maiden into the volcano, so to speak. And, you know, it gets easier and easier the more you do that. So it's like, okay, well, this – this position or these several positions are doing too well, they kind of go into this little bit of a, I don't know if timeout's the right word, but I just call it chop and block. And if they begin to improve again, I move them out of the chop and block into the normal watch list of my portfolio. So I'll give you a case in point. I use a little discretion on MTTR and stayed with it, but it's been a, it's been a chopping block for a couple of days and then today it did okay. So it's like maybe I might be able to, to move it out of the chop and block soon. But you'd be surprised sometimes when things start coming unglued a little bit and you just say, okay, well this, this one's not working. It's getting close to the stop. I need to make sure I honor that stop. And after you get through throwing a few of them into the volcano, so to speak, it starts to feel better. And some, it's, you know, I know it's kind of a, a, a cliche, but it seems like sometimes once you start doing that, you, two things, it does, well, several things it does. One, it you raise cash. So now you got more cash. And then two, should some new opportunity come along, you're sitting on more and more cash so you can pounce upon it. You're not using up the mental capital that you were. So it's not only just your trading capital, but it's the mental capital of dealing with a losing position. All right, let's shift gears. And now it's time for the fine art of buying things that go up and selling things that go down. I do all my own artwork, in case you're wondering. What do you call those things where they actually like take a picture of this and sell it or something? We should uh, We should do that. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about these chick cords. So I just grabbed the some trades 
from one of my accounts and I have one from another account I'll show you too. And eventually I need to go through through all of them. And, and, uh, but I think this is a pretty good representation because there's one in particular I want to show you. But I also want to show you some of the other stuff I'm into. IOTX, the entry was here and then the stop out was there. So I want to kind of clue you into my reasoning on some of these things. And this one, quite frankly, when I was working on my presentation for tonight, I said, you know what, I'm just going to bail out on this one. And it wasn't that fantastic to begin with. So I didn't want a stinker in for tonight's show, but said, you know, I think it's probably important that I show you that I bailed out. And, and that's the other thing, too, is you might want to sing like nobody's listening and dance like nobody's watching but trade like somebody's watching and so it's like okay i'm gonna have to show this portfolio tonight so i'm gonna go ahead and bail out on this thing because i don't like it and then inside it's probably a good idea to show you anyway here's cody you know what they do i have no idea <laughs> but there's the buy and that's there's the sell and I think my reasoning was it had pulled back in here. So let's see what that is. The buy, yeah, the buy was here. It was just a pullback. It hadn't quite got back to the 30 yet. And I ended up selling out here. Now, I didn't give it a whole lot of room. And if memory serves on this one, I just took a stab and I might have been a little aggressive and got it a little too early. But it's one of those he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day type of thing and by the way i am long this one once again i was talking to one of you guys earlier i think you are too so i hope i hate to use that word but i hope and i think we're gonna do okay let's just see i hope we do okay i should say here's another one that's kind of mediocre on this one and the entry was at 1107 i stopped out at 1060 or just flat out exited it and it wasn't a fantastic relative strength type of play and the, the point is, in some of these that I'm showing you, they're relative strength plays, and we're going to go look at them live in a few minutes and see what we can find. But in this particular case, I got in there, and I was out in a couple of days, and I think I might have made a couple of pennies on this, but not enough to brag about. And the other thing was, and this is a, probably the best thing to show you, but it maybe shows that there's a little human nature in me, and like, what the hell, you know, let's just give it a shot. But it wasn't fantastic. and it was improving though. The RF was pretty good. And I had some leftover money because my portfolio was, was nearly filled with slots, so to speak. And I had a half a slot left. And instead of just sitting on that half a slot, I was like, well, this one's kind of strong. Let's just for S and G's go ahead and make that trade. You got to be careful with that S and G kind of trading because you can get into trouble really, really quick. But I figure what the heck, you know, when the, when the crypto is really running, it's worth, doing a little S&G stuff. So here's the Atom 38.76, and I got out at 37.93. Notice something? Well, that's I got in less than what I got out. So I bought back here, and then I ended up bailing out on it here. And my reasoning was I sold it based on Prettier Girl swapping. And I bought back while working on these slots bought back oh yeah bought it back so while i was working on this they had a big rally in adam atom and then i bought it back but at the time when i sold it was a it was a case of well let's put together the best team we have now keep in mind relative strength trading and we're not we're not using an indicator okay it's not rsi or something like that it's just the strongest and the strongest rated by day over day change and also by looking at the charts is and sometimes what you'll do is you'll just say okay well this one's up the least or not up much from where i got in but these other ones are really running so i'm going to get rid of this one and we might be back in it tomorrow but i'm going to get rid of it for now and go out with a prettier girl or a guy whatever you prefer and if you prefer both, as Dennis Miller says, you're a greedy bastard. So I did get back in here because I thought it looked kind of interesting. Now, it's not a perfect setup, and I'll show you 
a more perfect setup. And when we go through the live charts, we'll see what we can find. Hey, Big Dave, you kind of suck. Why should it be impressed? Yeah, pretty much every trade, not too impressive. Well, channeling Churchill, trading is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. By the way, most of these were put on last Saturday and Sunday, and I did put those portfolios out last week, just so you'll know, just in case anyone's saying, hey, Dave, it's, this is all in hindsight. Well, so far, you're not impressed with this hindsight. <laughs> but as Churchill said, trading is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. And I think that's why I'm a good cryptocurrency trader for now. And I was talking to one of you guys earlier, and you're like, you know, I'm going to put a lot more money into crypto. It's like, eh, you know... You can make a lot of money in these things without having a lot of money in these things. And and I tell you what, I'm, I'm getting that bug too where I want to throw real money at it as opposed to this play money. But I think that once you start doing that, it begins to change a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is grow a small account and remain flippant in it because it's like, okay, I'm not playing with the, you know, the grocery buddy or whatever I need. This is just shits and giggles type of stuff but again trading is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm and again there's the mental capital in that it's also an actual capital but the mental capital is the most dangerous because what will happen is without if you're in the wrong state of mind when that opportunity comes along you're not going to be there to take it so i got into this one on the 3rd of October, what day was that? Sunday, I think, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And I was out the next day of half for a quick little flip. Now let's take a look at that. So I bought here, why? Well, it's going up, okay? And when you have a lot of green in the charts, or in the watch list, I should say, for the crypto, you need to think about buying the strongest ones. This is an inefficient market right now. This thing went up 100% over a couple of days. That's not an efficient market, okay? An efficient market is something where everything's kind of priced in and you've got, I forget how many, but it's something like uh, the ridiculous amount. There's like, I wanna say in the thousands of analysts for Apple, okay? So they're all fighting it out. And you know, not that Apple can't make any efficient moves, but you've got a lot of people in there and you've got you've got thousands of institutions in there. It's just a really crowded playing field. SAP e -minis. I have a love-hate relationship with those guys. Sometimes, sometimes I love them, sometimes I hate them. Uh, sometimes I love them and they hate my account, you know? By the way, it seems like lately the e-mini trading has been really good and the ETF trading has been really difficult and it's usually just the opposite. Uh, anybody else notice that? Let me know tonight. Uh, God, you're interested in fleshing out a little bit with you, and then uh, leave a comment below if not. I mean, if you're watching the recording. So anyway, flipped it out the next day, and of course, it, it, it went straight up. But that's fine with me. I don't care because I'm free rolling at this point, and I think it turned into like a 300% move or just something ridiculous. Comments. It was going up. Yeah, it's made up. <laughs> Comments. It was going up. Yeah, it's made up and a joke about a coin that's a joke, but who cares? I made a shit ton, S-H-Y-T, ton. Now, the, what I'm getting at here is they, they came up with Bitcoin, which a lot of people said was bogus, and some people, it's bogus at 1,000, it's bogus at 2,000, it's bogus at 4,000, it's bogus at 20,000, it's bogus at 50,000, it's bogus at 60,000. Who cares as long as it's going up? So, but as a joke, back in the day, they made up doggy coin, a douche coin, I think as they call it, and then they thought it would be funny to make up Dibunu or whatever it's called, Scooby Doo. It's a Japanese dog, similar to the whatever the doggy doji coin is, a doggy coin is, as I call it. So it's a joke about a coin that was a joke, but who cares? Now it's all over the media now, so I don't know if that kind of jinxed it, but it was going up, and I did end up getting out of the rest of my position today, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But I'm ready to get back in when the time comes. Here's another one. This one's a little bit more impressive than some of those other ones. Bought at 84, 
84 flipped out half at 113.06, better than a poke in the eye is what I say. So you can see I bought it here. Now, by the way, with this RS stuff, like right here, I'd be less inclined to buy it coming off the lows, especially with a little bit of overhead supply. But when it starts to break out in earnest, I'd be more excited about that. And here's where I flipped it out, and I still have half of the position on. So buying stuff that goes up. I'll drink to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the question is, hey, Dave, ETF trading difficult how? Well, I do some intraday, and probably too much intraday, ETF trading where I'm, I'm looking to get in. And usually I try to focus. So it seems like if I get outside of these four, I get in trouble. Lab U, Lab D, four pairs. Uh, pairs, my Kunas just slipped out. Pairs. Gush and drip. You don't sound like a coon ass. <laughs> Stick around a while. It'll come out. Sox L, Sox S, and Lab D and Lab U. And I figure if I can't make money on those, then I'm not going to make money by adding in more pairs. And every now and then I'll, I'll add, you know, I added in, uh, what's the financial one? FAS, FAS, and FAZ. And uh, I got burnt this week doing that. So why is it difficult? Well, it's just the markets have been choppy and full of whipsaw lately and maybe the reason etfs of the uh sap is a bit easier is because that market is always choppy and full of whipsaw but the swings have been big enough big enough to capitalize on the swings and the whipsaw so anyway this is ftm and you can see i bought it through a different account and let's see where the buy is so bought it sold it at the market here and then it was originally bought at the market here and i bought it because it was going up now it's also a bit of a, kind of a pullback to the ema a little bit quite a few days in the pullback but i did like the fact that it was going up by the way if you're looking for this is like a more cleaner setup back here and i don't know let me see if i had that in the slides uh no okay so that's there was this was a more cleaner setup we'll get to some of these put up pullbacks in just one second and I might have gotten in here and then stopped out. But it's still kind of set up as a bigger picture pullback. And if you get that nice RS move, then it might be worth a shot. So I did cash out of half of that one. I guess that was yesterday. And then today, as I put it together my slides, I was pleasantly surprised to see it was it was there. All right, a while back, I said I'd be willing to bet that one of my Next five stocks that I recommend will turn into a big winner. And one of you, rightfully so, said, aren't you being a little cocky? Why don't you be a little careful there, Dave? And I wasn't being cocky. It's just that we went 49 days trigger to trigger on setups. So that means that for weeks, I didn't recommend, recommend any setups. And then once I started recommending setups that I really liked, a lot of those didn't trigger. And it was 49 days. And I'm sure if I... Looked at my sales report, by and I, know, I probably know for a fact, but the sales on the trading service just absolutely nosedive because people don't want to be told that conditions are bad, sit on your hands because you're going to lose money if you go in. They want to be told, hey, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that, and they don't care if they lose money. Well, not you guys here because we've risen above that but the revolving door of people that come in when things are slow they're looking for action and why would i pay a guy to tell me to do nothing well let me tell you something as i preach i wish i had a guy many years ago to tell me to do nothing i wish i had a guy now let's just, let's stick around Dave, and shake his head look at me good day no nope. <laughs> don't do that and with a couple of you guys that i've become really friendly with through facebook y'all occasionally will call me on things and and rightfully so but yeah so trade like somebody's watching Anyway, so I said my next five trades will go up. So looking to the service, Anglet did stop out. I did use some discretion, stuck with it for a little while longer. I'll have to look at my trades. I'll make a note when I, uh, when I do the processing of this video to see how I ended up on that overall and see whether or not discretion paid off. And I think it did a little, if memory serves. Now, that's made a 1,000. These are the next five trades, right? Made a thousand bucks, which is a 20% move, better than the poke of the eye. 
And then I was able to ride it up and stop out at a little higher levels. But as I said last week in a yesterday stock chart show, I did give up a lot of open profits more than I should. Probably was chasing rainbows or, or chasing little ETFs, trying to scalp a little money. Not scalp so much, but try to ride an ETF all day long, make a little money so I can pay for some of the things around here that I really want or the wife really wants more specifically. <laughs> Now, YMM was, is down $1,036. This is based on a hypothetical 100K account. I do have all these trades, or at least I did have ALIT and DATS up until recently. I still have YMM. It was nice to see a little improvement today. It came off a little, though, by the end of the day, as you probably know. So down about 8%, but not dead yet. It was down 12% last week, so beginning to improve. CFLT trigger today, we're up 400, knock on wood. Oh, that hurts my head. 3.55%, <laughs> woohoo. Well, it's too soon to start kissing each other just yet. And number five is a question mark. I do have one recommendation going in tomorrow, so we'll see whether or not that would trigger becomes number five. We'll skip over this. We talked about this recently. Eventually, I'm gonna do a project where I take 12, 12 trades. I have a maximum of 12 trades that I could take over 12 months, maximum. No, or yeah. But believe me, 12 tickets should be, let me rephrase that. 12 months should be plenty of time, but we'll get to that. And uh, if you want some more on that, go in and look at the weekend charts. Or I'm sorry, my now comment I did a, a few weeks back. So we talked a little bit about why not bail in when everything gets iffy last week. And we actually had one stock began to take off. Okay. Okay, George, what's the, uh, I'm kind of rambling here, or was rambling at least. What's the, what's the hard lesson for you? Bailing on everything. You mean not bailing on everything? You don't want to bail on everything. So just a real quick update, the TFM 10% system. Remember last couple of weeks, I said it had a long ways to go. Well, it's starting to catch up with price a little bit. Now, this line here is not going to go up at all until and unless we make new highs. This is in ACP. You can uh, program it, obviously, in other platforms, too, if you, to your liking. But you can see that the 50-week SMA, 50-day, 50, 50 oh, let me just whoop, around it, whoop. 50 week SMA is right around the buy line. So if this buy line gets hit, it means the market is 10% away from the moving average. You want to stay long or try to stay long as long as we're above this moving average. Stay long the overall market. Doesn't mean that you want to exit your positions or stay in your positions if they're above the buy, if this is above the buy line. And as I said quite often, 10% is a good round number for the S&P. Kind of makes things simple. If they drop more than 10% from the closing high and close below the 50-week moving average, you might want to think about getting out, okay? And that's just in case that 50 SMA catches up the price quicker than the buy line. Well, that's why you have that second filter. That's a whipsaw filter, so to speak. And then the upside, as I preach each week, is two weeks above the 50-week moving average and any close above the buy line. Or let me rephrase that. Any close above the buy line, then it's also two lows or two weeks of Landry line. And we talked about this quite a bit. I don't want to digress too far because I think everybody here knows the system. But there's we talked about it a lot lately. So just check all the videos on my website, including the Stock Charts TV shows. So let's shift gears. Let's shift over to... Landry Light real quick. And it's something I've been talking a lot about too. We did a whole show last week just on this. And to my amazement, if you look at the 30 EMA, the 30 EMA held basis Landry Light for the most part going all the way back to last November. And what's pretty amazing is if you look at the 50 simple moving average, it held going all the way back to last November too. And there was no downs, downside Landry Light uh, the entire time until recently. So 
We had all green in here, meaning that the lows were greater than the moving average. And then where you don't see green is where it intersects the moving average, but not one bar on a daily chart was below the 50 day moving average. Now, what's pretty cool is it went a long, long time for doing that. And then in more recent times, we started to dip below that moving average. So you zoom in the chart, you can see we've got a little red down here, being the lows are less than the moving average. Now, my favorite moving average, and this is one of those you want to party with me, right, is the 30 EMA. So let's go back to that just for one quick second. And you could see that going back a long, long ways, like the 50, you didn't have any downside Landry light or any to speak of, I should say. You did have one bar here. And if you switch your eye, that's right there. Okay. And then I think you had, might have been one bar here. I'm not sure, but I don't see it in the actual chart. So if you got to switch your eyes and see it in the chart, it's nothing to worry about just yet. And you can see what's kind of cool is, and I know you want to party with me, right? <laughs> is that we closed that Landry light gap today in the P's. But we're going to zoom in a little bit more on these P's in one second, on the P's, I should say. So that's Landry light there. Let's see if we have the, let's throw the bow ties in here. I don't know if I could share these, I guess you'd call them templates with you, but if anybody knows, if I can, put it in the comments below. And uh, Stock Charts TV, if somebody from there is watching, which I know you do, keep an eye on me, right? <laughs> Let me know if there's a way to do it. Oh, by the way, as far as the cryptocurrencies, Stock Charts did, does have a great list of cryptocurrencies, and you can do the relative strength sorting there. I just got a, I was just up and running on TradingView before stock charts uh, came up to speed, and I did beg them to 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 give me the altcoins, and they did. So a lot of what I'm going to show you in TradingView, you can also do in stock charts. As I say quite quite often, I use a lot of tools in my business. So I went into this in a lot of detail in yesterday's show, not the last week at Bandcamp, you, but you can see we had mostly green, had a little bit of yellow with the bow tie moving averages. And that just means that the 10 simple is greater than the 20 simple and the 20, exp I'm sorry, 10 simple is greater than 20 exponential, 20 exponential is greater than 30 exponential. And I know you guys, you're up, you guys that are here, your eyes are glazing over. <laughs> but believe me, as soon as I don't say exactly what those moving averages are, even though I write about it and talk about it, and do presentations about it everywhere, somebody's going to ask. Anyway, you can see we did turn yellow when they crossed over. So that's not a good thing. And then we actually turned red for a while, and we're still red, even though price crossed back above it. And that's because the 10 is less than the 20, and the 20 is less than the 30. So it's going to stay red as long as that happens. Let's shift over to Bitcoin. I'm sorry, crypto. I don't know why I call it Bitcoin tonight. Yeah, George, you didn't say you you bailed out on everything, and then it came back. You know, it, that's the, that's the hard part of trading is that. It's almost like you have to learn all the lessons yourself. And kind of remind, like my daughter, it's like, I wish she could learn from other people's experiences. And I read a quote once and it said, learn from other people's experiences because you don't have time to experience everything yourself. You're not gonna live long enough for that. Training, unfortunately, is, is kind of one of those things where it's almost like you have to, you have to live through it all. You have to make those mistakes until you feel the pain of those mistakes. You just you just can't you can't learn how to trade properly. I lost over 100% of gains because of that a few months ago. A bailing out too early. Yeah, as I said, not the last week at Bandcamp. You once again. <laughs> But there's always a reason to exit a market and rarely a reason to stay. And it's hard. And I didn't want to bore you again this week. I know too late, but I didn't want to bore you and go through all the portfolio. But if we make brand new market, brand new highs in the market, I certainly want to do a walkthrough. Not that it's always going to work, but more often than not, or, or, or quite often enough, I should say. Sticking with your positions, as long as you're not stopped out, is the thing to do because you're going to catch these occasional big winners. I never would have dreamed that ARLP would have been our biggest winner 
going through all of this mess, but it's really helped us out quite a bit. So we'll we'll go through all those, but you'd be surprised at how many times you just want to pull a plug, get out of everything. And believe me, I feel your pain. I've, I've been there before. And the problem is you can't set yourself up for failure. You can't say, I should pull a plug. No, Dave says follow the plan. I really feel like I should pull a plug. No, Dave says follow the plan. So I'm going to follow the plan. Well, you have to be decisive in your actions. Or are you going to follow the plan or are you going to pull a plug? Now, if you pull a plug, you have to live with that decision. If you follow the plan, you have to live with that decision. But many times, and believe me, I, I, I same thing happens to me. And I don't know if it's cognitive dissonance is the right word or not, or right phrase. But you can't go in and say, oh, I think I'm going to get out. Maybe I won't. Yes, I will. And then not get out. And all of a sudden, the market implodes. You've got to say, I'm going to get out for this particular reason. Or better yet, I'm going to get out because I'm stopped out. And if you're not stopped out, then just follow the plan. I know, easier said than done. Speaking of getting out, I got out of this one earlier today. I may have micromanaged a little bit. I also was busy talking about it as they begun to implode. And I don't remember exactly where I got out. I'll, I'll be happy to look it up for you later. But I'm somewhere in this big spill here. And probably like right in here, because I put this little stop in here or, or lurch for if for just in case it starts going back up. I don't want to lose my position. It's funny, last night I was thinking, I'm going to stick with this forever. Because if it just goes a one penny, I'll make a million dollars. Yay. You know. <laughs> and then today I come in, I'm all excited, up quite a bit, 300% or whatever the case may be. And then it starts coming back in. It's like, you know what? I, I think I'll be happy with that. I will think I'll take that. So a few thousand versus a few million. But hey, I'm not dead yet. We might come back to it. Now, relative trade sorting, all I'm doing is sorting by percentage change. And that tells you how each one of these is doing relative to the others. If any of you guys ever figure out how to do delta relative strength with something, let me know. As I said before, we worked with a software company, we being Trading Mark, it's not me. I was kind of a liaison in this particular case because I was a sort of the tech guy as far as uh, programming and all for market related programming and things like that. But anyway, we couldn't come to agreement. But he had some software, and I forget, I don't know if he's still around or not, but he had software would give you delta relative strength. And that's kind of like, okay. Here's one that's only at what one and a half percent, but it might have been down 10 percent earlier, so it's kind of like climbing up this ladder of performance. Okay, and as I've said ad nauseum, I have one client that's paid for two down payments on investment properties, but not right now, so don't try to do it right now. He front ran one the other day and it failed miserably, believe me. You don't want to be hyperactive and hopping in the relative strength game unless you're in a relative strength market. These altcoins heat up and cool down, okay? Right now, they're fairly hot again, so they're worth trading. And you can see, look at this, 85%, 27%. So when you see a plethora of green in here, one of you guys thank me for using the word plethora, said it, it, it means a lot. So, well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. But when you see a plethora of green in here, then you might want to trade some of these guys. So this one here, I think I'm, I don't know why I missed it, but I guess you can't kiss all the women unless you're Harvey Weinstein or what's his name? Bill Cosby. We got roofies. I guess we can't pick on Bill Cosby anymore because he's, um, he was wrongfully accused, I suppose, but I guess we can pick on Epstein. Anyway, you get the idea. I, it's, I trying to be funny is not working. But this thing went up 3% overnight or whatever that was. It's 80, it's up 86% now, well of its best level. So I would just buy it now because it's up 86%. But if it's down 40% and it's up, it's right here, then it might be worth a shot or 30% or 20%. One of you guys, I think it was John Z, I know it was John Z, said earlier, really hard to buy one up 30%, but you do have to kind of close your eyes and buy. What did I say earlier? You have to be kind of flippant. Here's FTM. This is uh, 
the prettiest girl right now in my portfolio, as I showed you earlier, I did flip out. I think I flipped out right around here. It took off. That's okay. You know, uh, the old me would get pissed off because I don't have 100% on. The new me is just happy to, to make money. So let's go through a few of these. Now, this one, this one wouldn't really excite me for the RS game because it's got a lot of overhead supply to go through. If it was just kind of pulling back, notice back here, you got a nice little pullback. Sometimes you get a nice little pullback like this, and then you get a nice little RS move. It might be worth a shot or, or strong. So let's just see if we can find one. This one's just kind of in a downtrend. I wouldn't get too excited about buying that. This one looks a little bit better. It's kind of breaking out above its range. It's okay. Cody, I just bought earlier. This was one I failed miserably on, and I might fail miserably again. because So far, it doesn't look like it's working. But you've got a nice little pullback to the 30 EMA, and it's also high in the RS list. So that, to me, is a, is a double, not double whammy, but two good things. This one looks okay. Let's see if we can find something. It's up 9%. That's okay. So this one's kind of low level, still has a lot in here. If it was a big base and just kind of break it out of the base, I'd be more excited about it. Let's just see real quick if we can find something. Adam, I think I'm long this one again. I don't have it marked in the portfolio. It was strong and it was holding the 30 EMA. So I thought it looked pretty good. And you can see my prior little RS plays in here. This was a this was a buy. I think this was a sell. I'll go. I am still long this one. It's not doing so hot as you can see. But that's okay. Now I'm not this flippant with my stocks because it means a lot more to me. And somehow you have to learn to to be a little bit more flippant, right? This one. And if it pulls back a little bit more, which I hope it doesn't, it, it might be worth a shot. I am along this one. I think I got along this one way back here. It held the 30 and then became an RS play. So you might want to do that as opposed to bottom fishing in these when they're going up. But anyway, you get the idea, I think. And I just keep it super simple in the altcoins for now. Maybe as they mature, they might not be as inefficient. But inefficiency is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's my whole job is to seek out inefficiency, whether it's in IPOs, all coins, or it could stocks, of course, or it could be a big cap issue that's efficient that's getting ready to make an inefficient move. So something like Apple or something when it begins to tank, there's a few big cap Semiconductors I've been seeing lately that could be on the cusp of rolling over. All right, let's get everything cleaned up and we'll shift gears. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you want to start asking about individual stock picks, feel free to do so now. I get these charts set up. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. QQQ bow tie. All right, let's take a look at that. In fact, let's do that while we're still waiting on the other charts to come up. So we had the bow ties in here. Let's put it in a Q, 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 Q. Yeah, it's a little sloppy of a bow tie. You kind of had a first thrust here, and it's a little bit on the sloppy side. You notice you had a little bit of yellow. It took a while to cross over. But yes, technically, it's a bow tie. If you want a big picture enter entry, I'd say about 300 in here. I'd let this gap close unless you're doing something intraday. All right, we've got the charts up and running. Ryan as a worthy BAB. All right, let's. Uh, I'd like to hear that. Let's see. I might. Uh, I might play along with you. And that's one of the things that you know. I don't want to beat the dead horse because I talked about it so much, but that's one of the things I wanted to do with the. Um, Great ticket product project is figure out a way to have you guys participate with me and maybe do it as kind of a I don't want to sound like Grand Pumba. Oh mother father. I just got knocked out the peas. Y'all guys, you guys almost got a uh <laughs> an F bomb tonight. Eh, it is what it is, right? See, I'm flipping. 
No, I'm not. All right, SP 500 gap open today. I want to take a look at the spiders to get a true open. They're also kind of a bow tie for those keeping score, but if it gets well above this 30, I would sit on my hands as for shorting. I wouldn't necessarily go long, but I'd sit on my hands a little bit as for shorting the market. Let's take a look at the, and by the way, you know, start looking at, you also want to look at things like net net price movement. So August, September, October, you can see we've gone a long ways with some sideways movements. That's a little bit of concern. Still looks a little tappy in here. Uh, like I said earlier, of course, this was when the market was up about here. It looks like it was going to be a big do-over from the whole slide. It just seems like a lot of people out there are poo-poo in the market, and usually it doesn't tank when that happens. NASDAQ composite, nice little thrust higher here today. Well, if it's best levels, though, this gap, if this gap gets closed, I'd be concerned, but you can see bow tie moving average to the downside. Let's throw the 50 in there for a good measure. And as you can see, we still have some Landry light quite a bit, a couple of weeks below the 50. So that's of a little concern. Russell 2000 stuck in a stupid range forever. Energies, look at that. Okay. I feel like Tony, you know, Luda Energy is a huge, just a tick off of all-time highs so that's interesting could see some new setups there on a pullback metals are mighty pulling backs we get a pullbacks but they remain in the downtrend and remain pretty ugly in here and that's probably bounce with help but both gold and silver which remain in, in solid downtrends as you can see yeah keep the stock picks coming a couple of areas we'll take a look at like drugs Notice that drugs did bow tie down. The trigger would have been here, a bit of a slide, and now they're having a retrace rally. This looks fairly ugly, and write this down in case you haven't seen me say this before, or in case you get hit by a beer truck. When you get a really tight bow tie like this, and if you look in the ACP platform or Metastock, it's also built into Metastock, by the way, you get a you get a red to gr a green, I'm sorry, a green to red on the flipping without any days in between or a few days in between. Those are the best signals, and when they hit that 50 SMA fairly hard or attack it at a hard angle, that's usually a pretty good signal. But keep in mind, short side, big pain in the ass, to put it frankly, to put it mildly. As soon as you get short, markets go right back up. One thing I was telling my people earlier tonight, it's darn if you do and darn if you don't. On the short side, you have to anticipate it a little bit. you got to get short early because if you don't get short early, the market's going to tank without you. If you do get short early, you know, the market goes straight back up. So it's a, it could be a really tough environment. Make no bones about it. <laughs> I did see something really interesting once. So some guy came in in 2007, I think October 2007, and, and I started showing a bunch of shorts, and he absolutely fell in love with the short side. He had a hard time. He had a hard time when the market went back up again because he just started loving the short side. He just began trading, and he didn't care, and he just shorted and shorted and shorted. But I guess I guess he did have a little bit of a bias, and that's the thing is you can't you have to learn not to have a bias. Even though I would much rather trade the long side, if you can't be in a trend you love, then love the trend you're in. And I hope I just said hope I know, but hopefully we don't turn into a downtrend or bear market. But as you can see, health services none of those areas sharp attack into the 50, pulling back a little bit in here, but looks a little ugly at least for now. A few big updates, of course, would fix that. Retail another one sharp attack against the 50. We're seeing a bit of a trend or a, a trend develop here with these these stocks that are in a lot of trouble. Now, keep in mind, again, not to beat that horse, but a few big updates will make all the difference in the world. Transport's been in a downtrend forever. A little pop today, but came right back in. So that's a bit of a disappointment there. Hardware or Apple computer, as it's now called, looks a little toppy. Bow tied down. Software, same sort of action. Bow tied down. Semiconductor's a bit of a bummy. Bummer, uh, bow ties to the downside, sharp angle through the 50, simple, and a bit of a rally today, but off of their best level. So these guys look like they could be in trouble, maybe on an intraday basis, something like Sox S, should we have a big gap open and it begins to reverse, or if this gap tries to get closed, might be worth a shot, but only on an intraday basis. And like I said earlier, I haven't had a tremendous amount of success with the the intraday trading on the ETFs lately, although the the E-minis have done okay, all right? They're always a 
there are always stuff. I just got stopped out at a loss on that one, so I don't make it sound like I've been printing money there. TCDX, I'm pointing to my trading screen. TCDX, TDCX, TDCX. Okay, so this one, let me check my IPO list. Yeah, I've got a few IPOs on my list today. TCDX was one of them, so good eye on that, John. One, two, three, four, five. Did it take out the day one high? Yes, it took out the day one high on day four. Okay, does it have good range? Yeah, it's got a pretty good range. It went from 19 to 26. That's about 30%. Just pulling that number out the air, but that's probably close. That's a pretty good run. Does it have good volume? Let's check. It had 800,000 today. Yeah, million, two million, seven million, plenty of volume. So high five to, to John for finding that IPO. John's a real, relative, <laughs> a resident IPO guru in the Facebook group. So thank you, John. Facebook group open to everyone, but you do have to be at least a gold member of daylander.com. And that's to keep the ref wrap out. <laughs> I'm half kidding. But it does help. You know, I've been involved with groups before, and they all kind of, what's the word? They drop down or they become, evolve into Lord of the Flies after a while. <laughs> and this has been the, the longest I've seen a group last without happen, that happening. And I think a big part of that is we're like minded, and that's, you know, because we're, we're all on the same team for the most part. We might agree to disagree, but I think it's because. We all have the common interests of the trend trading methodology. All right, TDCX, you get a high five for that one. It has to close. Where does it have to close, John? It has to close above 25.25. And I would let it close just a slightly bit above that too, unless it was had a really, really strong rally. It looks like it's going to punch through it on the close. Okay, Ryan, R-Y-A-N. Okay, Ryan, let's back this out a little bit. Okay, so Ryan's an IPO. And it's just, this is kind of a stealthy type of deal. It's above $30 a share. So I would pass as far as like a buy at B, but I hear you and it might be worth keeping on your radar in case it breaks down and then pulls back a little bit. So yeah, uh, let's keep on your radar. I wouldn't rush out and buy it just yet. All right, any any other ones you guys want to talk about real quick? Facebook, yeah, I like that one. It's um, it's actually a lantern. This is a short tonight, but I think it's worth mentioning. You've got a bow tie. Actually, the bow tie was here, so the short would have actually been here. And then now it's pulling back again. I think it's worth a shot. Uh, that's a case where this is a very efficient stock, even though it's made a pretty inefficient move for quite a while in here. But it's a big, thick stock. Look at that volume on that. It's huge. It's uh, 169 million today. A lot of people fighting it now, but it looks like it could be in trouble. So yeah, I think that one's okay. I, I, I'd like a deep pullback now. That's the only thing. That's the only caveat. But, you know, short side, what did I just say? Sometimes you have to anticipate a little bit. OLPX. That is another IPO. It's a little, one of you guys used the word wonky earlier. It's a little wonky looking, but who knows? If that's going to be the strangest buy at B ever, right? Usually a buy at B tends to go up and trigger. Day one high, one, two, three, four. We took out the day one high. So a close above 27. That's going to be, hard. I'm going to have to think about this one, but it is kind of interesting. It might have, and this is something, this might be a new pattern here, John, who knows? But let's think about what happened here. This thing came public, sold off a little bit. There was some enthusiasm. So as of this day here, everybody's at a gain. Everybody's pretty excited, feeling pretty good. This day it goes down a little bit. They're like, oh, geez. Oh, geez, as they say in Fargo. And then what happens today, bam, 
a lot of people probably got flushed out on that one. My chart looks different than yours, OLPX. Let me just take a look at it in the background, OLPX. Huh, they do, huh? All right, well, I wonder what's going on here. Yeah, I'm only showing two days in the, uh, any other one. All right, we'll have to keep it. We'll keep an eye on that one. I'll uh, I'll take another look at it in post, and see. Okay, well, maybe I made too much of it. Too much ado with that. E W C Z. Yeah, this one looks okay. Um, kind of having a hard time getting excited about a wax center, if that's what I think it is. <laughs> um, so many jokes. So little time. The volume looks like it could be a little thin, so I would watch the bid ask. I don't know. It just doesn't really jump out of me. I did see it on this day here, and I'm like, oh, I just don't know if I could do it or not. And I have been watching it. But you know, sometimes those are the best. I I you know, and then every time I say, uh, don't take one of those and don't take it, it takes off. So it's like I was in the back of my head with the MCW, Mr. Car Wash, and that one failed miserably. But I had a few, um, a few on. Volume is thin. Was that a wax joke? <laughs> I don't know. I just gotta be careful. If it's the same kind of waxing I'm thinking about. All right, any more? Yeah, I'd leave this one alone. Maybe if the volume picks up and then it pulls back, it starts to trend. You know, you gotta keep in mind with, with IPOs like the TCDX, that's a, a pioneer type of setup where you're getting in really early or as early as possible. And something that's not quite as exciting, at least chart wise and business wise, I guess, you wait for a secondary setup. And it's, you know, the best example I can give of that is Academy, as I've said a thousand times. But we're long Academy, we've been long forever. Way back here at Buy a B, I'm like, I'm not going to go buy Academy at a Buy a B. It's a brick and mortar retailer. A brick and mortar retailer can't go up in this environment. Right? Everybody's home. Everybody's going to order everything online. Well, it pulled back and I said, you know what, Dave? If you've got a perfect little pullback right here, I'm going to take it. Now I'm going to take it. I'm going to recommend it to my people. So that's going to force me to take it. See how that forces me to do these things? And I took it. And we are still long, believe it or not. Somebody asked me in, in, on YouTube last tonight, I guess, about what do you do with retirement? I know you're a trader. It's like, well, think in terms of a trader, but keep in mind, it doesn't mean that you can't stick with a stock or a mutual fund or a market longer term. Just have a place in mind where it would have failed and the easiest thing for us to do. I know, haha, but once you take those partial profits, you let that move, you let that stop gradually widen out. And then you're able to ride out these longer term trends. So if you take a look at something like a weekly chart, you got it way, way, way back here. And so far, so good. Knock on wood. TPX as a long. I did see this one. Um, it just didn't get me that excited. You know, it, it took off. And it made most of its move on that one day. It kind of drifted around. It took off again. It's been catching my eye, but I just don't know if I can get excited about it. But yeah, that's one that's kind of a boring stock. But sometimes these boring stocks can just kind of plot along. The HV is okay at 38. I guess I just don't like the way it took off in this one big bar. And then what's interesting is if you draw a horizontal line there, it, it pulled all the way back to its breakout point. So if anything, if this thing continues to kind of fail in here and makes a bow tie, it might be a short. And that would be a big efficient stock that could become inefficient. Okay, any more? Going once, going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. It looks like we set another record this week, so thank you so much. Anything unanswered, Dave at DaveLandry.com. Last one, SMH. We'll squeeze it in real quick. SMH. These are the semiconductors. It looks okay. Um, I don't. Do you know if you can actually short these? They might. You might have difficulty shorting them.
But it looks okay. You've got a bow tie to the downside. I'd wait for this gap to close, though, I think. And the semis have been a little choppy in here. And they've been stronger longer term, but now they're beginning to break down. It might be a case of bigger they are and harder they fall. I think I'd, I'd look for a semiconductor short an individual issue. But I, I understand you if you're looking to get some exposure. Do be careful if you're going up the SOX S and you're going to hold it for more than one day because of the tracking error will hurt you longer term. All right, everybody have a great weekend. If we don't talk again, I'll see all you guys and girls tomorrow in Facebook. Everyone else, hope to see you again next week. Thank you so much.